I wasn't in last week's report because I was sick, but there is no excuse. So, as punishment, I am in a dress. In the freezing cold, I'm in a dress. Let's do this thing. What did she say about the dress? Ah! <laughs> what? Get it off me! Hey everyone, I'm not Goku, and this is the Ruby Report! <laughs> Hello everybody, it's your man Joe Mahawk 2694 and I am here with Django Fett 23 for episode 4, or episode 6 of volume 4, Tipping Point. And oh baby, is that accurate. In this episode, Ruby and her gang are just walking down the street. Walking down the street. Still walking. Saying that they're just going to be walking pretty much for a couple of days. Hopefully... They're trying to get to the next town or something. And then Nora's just being her Nora self, joking about it. It's like, what are we going to do today? Walk. With more walking. Apparently Ruby only thought this was only going to take a few weeks, not almost a whole year. And then they come across what looks like a bombed out village. That's not on a map. So they rush inside. Look for survivors thinking the town was attacked. And in said bombed out village, they find out it is not actually bombed out, but abandoned. And that light is very blinding. It's called... Only Yuri. Which apparently Ren has some connection to. Why Ren's giving backstory on this town. He knows of this town. Nora didn't even know about this town. So that means there are things that not even Nora knows about Lai Ren. Lai Ren, why didn't you tell your wife who would that you knew about this town? You monster! Because it turns out the most elite and powerful of Mistral didn't like how the kingdom was being governed. So they all pooled their resources together to build their own town with their own rules and maybe even make their own kingdom someday. And in his own words, a lot of people thought it was going to be the future. His parents certainly did. I guess this is where Ren's parents died. I'm kind of curious to know what actually happened now. Like, why the Grim attacked. Going forward, we go to the Ice Princess or Snow Princess or whatever you want to call her. Weiss who is giving a live performance, and my god, she has a beautiful singing voice. And once again, Casey Williams kicks ass. I mean, holy crap. The three seconds of her singing was enough for me to think, okay, as soon as this soundtrack comes out, I gotta buy it. Then it goes to everybody in this room just talking, drinking. Bunch of rich people talking about crappy crap that doesn't mean jack shit while sipping expensive mojitos. Weiss looks over and sees a picture of Beacon before it was destroyed. Her dad's talking with these two people about Funnish rights and how he pays them all the same wages he pays all his other miners. Probably a horseshit amount. Horrible for what the labor they do. Jacques grabs her and says, where are you going? So she tells her dad, I want to go get a drink. I'm just saying, I don't think... He wants to keep her on a leash. So Weiss goes over to look at this painting of Beacon, and it is beautiful. He meets this guy named Henry Marigold. His design is like a weird mixture of like Neptune plus Jean. But the guy has style, and he also has the thing of putting a bunch of rings on his fingers. So as he's making these stupid comments, Weiss tells him to leave, or she'll have security escort him out. He's still being nice, at least. You know, when he's saying, uh, you know, he says... You gonna buy this painting? And she's like, no. And he's like, yeah, it's kind of expensive for a painting. And she's like, it's for charity. And he's like, oh, really? And he asks the most important question that anyone could ask this episode. Charity for what? Somebody asked that question! Finally! So he walks away. Weiss is still looking at the picture of Beacon. We're gonna be seeing him again since he has a name. You don't get a name in Ruby unless you're important. So then, we start hearing one of the bitchiest bitches we've seen on this show saying, Vale got what it had coming to it. And Weiss explodes. Shut up! You don't have a clue! None of you do! You're all just standing around talking about nothing! They're all being arrogant fucks. And so her dad's like, We are not! You need to listen to me! And she gets knocked on the ground. Uh, he didn't do it on purpose, but still. And then that causes her semblance to go haywire and she summons a borba tusk which starts charging directly at miss bitchy bitch and what happens the woman's like i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry and right as it's about to hit her bang ironwood the hero 
So, guess what, Joma? Ironwood's not an iron dick. Ironwood is a good man, Jomo. What are you gonna do? How can you disprove this man's loyalty to everything? Jomo, Django, if if either of you say that Ironwood was the reason Weiss's glimp went haywire, Yas is a dumb... Yas is dumb. The guy that I once again have to admit is probably not bad, Ironwood. What do you think about that? So, Miss Bitchy Bitch says, ARREST HER! Ironwood's like, She's the only one making sense. And walks away like the stressed out badass he is. And I'm like, YES! Someone in this whole godforsaken kingdom actually acknowledges what the hell's going on. Oh, and quick little Easter egg. The person who painted that painting of Beacon, pretty sure it was Weiss's mom. It looked like Elsa Schnee or something like that. It definitely had a big E. Anyways, back to Ruby's gang. And they're still in Oniuri for some reason. They're just exploring the town. And so then Lyran senses something. Because the birds are flying everywhere. And who is right on their ass? Oh, I hate this guy, I hate this guy, I hate this guy. Tyrion racing towards them. And holy crap, you're just thinking, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. And then he starts attacking. They try to figure out who he is. He says he's not important to any of them. He looks at Jean with this creepy ass face. Please play a picture or put a clip up, Delta, of Tyrion's thirsty face for Jean. Well, you do interest me. Ooh. If you don't, all don't know what thirsty means, it means he's hungry for Jean. It means he wants that ass or that D. D, D, D or that D. <laughs> and oh my god, one on four, and the heat still outclasses them all. I noticed some weird red effect when Tyrion first hit Crescent Rose. I wasn't sure what it was. I thought he actually cut Ruby. But then as the fight went on, I realized, oh, it's just her aura protecting her. So then they get into a big fight. And this guy's weapons are crazy. They're like claw-mounted gauntlets like the Predator. And oh my god. So we get into a small fight. And he's like hanging off of Jean's shield. And Ren shoots at it and bounces off of him. And then... Not even Nora's power-up plus her hammer was enough to get through Tyrion's scorpion tail because he's a faunus and a scorpion one. Meanwhile, you see a crow zipping towards the scene, getting closer and closer. Crow, the crow, turns into crow. And Tyrion goes in for us, killing strike. <laughs> and at the last possible second, and there's Crow. Crow, baby. Crow comes out of nowhere. Crow zips in front of Ruby, pulls his sword behind him, and stops Tyrion's strike. And everything is dead calm for a second. Ruby gives a little tiny smile. And then Crow says, Hey. That's when the episode ends. We get a two-parter. This is one of the most epic endings to Ruby. I can't wait for next week's episode. If there's not a Ruby next week, I'm gonna freak out. I might be clipping the mic a lot because it's right in front of me. Crow, kick Tyrion's ass, please. Oh my god. This is not gonna end well. I seriously thought Ren or Nora was gonna die there. I really thought one of them was going to die. Ruby now has at least a couple of broken ribs. Tyrion's exposed himself. Things are not good right now. Can't wait till the next one. Anyways, I've been Natural Goku. This is Django Pet 23. John Lock 2694 saying, see ya. I will see you all next time. And remember, I'm still in a dress. It feels horrible. Crow versus Scorpion. God, this show used to be funny. We forgot the mic the first time. This episode, I can't say the word Mercury. Damn it. But one of them's dead, one of them's a deadbeat, one of them's most likely an alcoholic, and one of them is... we don't know. I have a theory about um, Tyrion's um, semblance. Maybe his semblance is he's able to penetrate through people's auras. <laughs> Maybe a little mur Mercury, Mercury, I can't say that name.
I just said I didn't care. If you'll, now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some Iron Banner to finish up. Yeah, or a world of remnant and week or a week hiatus and then ice cream. What? Even Jean is like, what? I'm making her dad more creepy than what he is. So, fuck. Mm, sing for daddy. Bitch being a bitch. So, my little thing that I talked about on a social media site where the moms of Ruby could be their own team. Summer, E, Kali, Raven, Team Seeker. Beep -beep. I wasn't even halfway done it. Good thing he wasn't in this episode. I don't have a full grasp theory on why Tyrion is interested in Jean, but all I know is it's gonna be epic. Fuck off, wind chime. Hopefully I don't pop this time and we can redo this thing. And Lyrin is on the point. He's just defending right at the moment. I'm sorry, I had some boogies. 